What are you doing here? I know you. <laughs> Now, I'm not too sure about that, Bruce, but I can tell you that Mr. Bruce Sample is a bit of a legend in the Aussie aquaculture game. Uh, he's had a lot to do with the development of the jade perch as a commercial fish, uh, not only here in Australia, but also in Southeast Asia. Uh, he's a little bit of a, an entrepreneur. He does a lot of consultations, not only here in Australia, but also in Southeast Asia. And actually, while we were there, uh, he took a number of phone calls, and, but he was kind enough to um, let us have a look at the spawning process for the jade perch. Now, unfortunately, I'm not the most professional videographer, so I don't really have a very good audio equipment. So a lot of the film I took on the day was actually very poor audio wise. So I'm going to have to do a bit of narration over the top of what I've shot. And Bruce has also been kind enough to um, let me use a lot of the footage from his own YouTube channel. Please check it out. There will be links down in the description below. Just to let you know, this isn't a sponsored clip in any way. I actually started chatting to um, Bruce privately when we had a few issues with the Jade Perch here, and he helped me out with that and invited me up to um, check out the hatchery. So uh, I had to jump at the chance. So even though I'm not sponsored, I thought I would give um, Bruce a bit of airtime just to explain what they're about there at Aussie Fish and um, yeah, what they might be able to help you out with. And what varieties would you, you tend to grow out uh, the most? On your farm. Silver perch and jade perch are the most popular species. We specialise in producing fish for, that, for people that want to grow them for the table as opposed to fish that go out into dams for people to catch recreational fishing. And of course you also help us humble backyard aquaponicus out when you've got the, uh, the fish available? We have and yeah. we can deliver them to your door. Minimum quantity 30, maximum quantity well, the sky's the limit. So that's enough of the spruiking and into the meat and potatoes of the clip. Uh, not long after we got there, we all piled into the farm trucks and headed on down to the broodstock pond. They've got uh, a number of ponds on the farm, uh, and this one in particular was filled with jade perch. Now, the process they use to harvest the broodstock fish from the pond is pretty straightforward, as you'd expect. Basically, Richard and Braden hopped into the pond with a large neck and dragged from one end down to the other. And while they were doing that, I was having a bit of a natter to Bruce and checking out the fish transport tank that sits on the back of a trailer. You might actually recognize it from some of his clips if you follow him here on YouTube. So once the net was dragged through the pond, the base of it was pulled out of the water and they used star pickets to secure sections of it out of the water just to help to corral the fish. Now what they were chasing were three females and six males. And I think they grabbed a couple of extras just to make sure that if one of the females didn't have viable eggs, uh, they had one or two up their sleeves. So Richard basically went through the process of selecting the right fish. There were a couple of silvers in there, so they were um, tossed back out into the pond. And he was basically looking for nice fat female fish. Um, pretty easy to spot. They're a lot larger in the belly than the males. And with the males, they were looking for fish that were basically running by, meaning that they were ready to reproduce. So while we were there, Richard was explaining that the jades and the silver perch will not breed in dams due to both of them needing flooding events to stimulate the fish to reproduce. Not only that, but the eggs need to be in constantly moving water until the fry emerge from them. So I know that's probably dashed a few of your hopes out there, folks, but yeah, that's basically the way it works. So once the fish was selected, it was back up to the hatchery sheds where they performed a bit of a health check on the fish and got them ready to spawn by introducing a spawning agent. So the first step of the process was to sedate the fish in some well oxygenated water in the sink. It didn't take long for them to fall unconscious. From there, a sample of the female's eggs were taken by Bruce and he checked them under the microscope just to make sure they were schmicko and viable. The fish were then weighed and an appropriate amount of spawning agent was in administered by injection into the fish. And from there they were taken out into a well oxygenated recovery tub ready to go into the spawn tanks once they woke up. Now the male fish were basically weighed and had the spawning agent introduced to them and then they were sent out into the recovery tanks with the females. So once the fish had woken up from the anaesthetic, they were placed one female and two males into the three spawning tanks. And from there, they were pretty much all left alone until the deed was done, which Bruce managed to catch on camera this time. And thank you very much for sharing it with me, Bruce. And the tanks were filled with fertilized eggs. And once those eggs were in there, the fish were removed and placed back down into a recovery brood tank 
for reintroduction into the ponds at a later date. So Bruce was kind enough to invite me back a couple of days later once the eggs had hatched so we could run through the next steps in the process, basically what happens to the fry and how they're reintroduced back into the pond. Now what's happening here, the eggs have just hatched and when they're hatched they're helpless. All they can do is sink head down and then turn around and wriggle their way up towards the surface. When they get puffed out they just stop and start sinking head down again. And over the next few days, they gradually move to horizontal swimming, they get pigmentation, their eyes develop and their mouth develops and they start snapping their mouth open and shut. And that's when they go out in the paint and bomb. That's six days after injecting. That's incredible. So this is what we call a plankton pond. How many litres in size do you think this would be? This would be about three million litres. Wow, and how many, um, how many fish would you expect to raise to um, fingling size or sail size in a pond this size? On a good day, we would get maybe 200,000 out of this pond through with one crop, okay. and we can run maybe three crops a season out of this pond. Not such a good day, only 30,000. And what's always interests me is like you're starting the fish off in this small little pond. Um, they start off as larvae. And you put them in the pond and they're pretty much all just left to um, fend for themselves. How do they get their feed um, in their first couple of weeks of life? Well, if we could just pan down and have a look at the bottom of the pond here. We start off with a pond that's dust dry. And all these little cysts of these little animals that are the first food for fish are just sitting on the dry ground waiting for the ground to become flooded. Yeah. And when it floods, they all hatch out. One of the first feeds they eat is rotifer. And then they'll move on to copepods and especially nauplii from copepods, which is basically baby copepods. They're really tiny. You need a microscope to see them. I'll take over from here because the audio got pretty bad at that point. So after about 10 days, they start to feed the fry a very fine powdered dust that is made specifically for the needs of the small fish. Now they're fed this as fingerlings in the pond, so they basically become pond weaned. Um, that means that once they are removed from the ponds, taken up to the shed, which we'll run through in a tick, and shipped off to you, they're ready to take a commercial feed. Now, as I wasn't there for the harvesting, Bruce has been kind enough to let me use some of his footage, as I mentioned before. So we'll run through the harvesting process of the fingerlings from the ponds before they're shipped out to you folks who either run farms or have a little system in the backyard. So basically, we start off the same as when we were netting the fish from the brood ponds. The big difference is that they're actually draining the pond at the same time so they can harvest the maximum amount of fish from the pond. So once they've got all the fish corralled down one end, they use the same little trick with the stakes holding the net out of the water to make it easier for them to net the fish and run them up into the tank on the back of the trailer. And as I said, the water level is constantly falling, so they have to finish this step fairly quickly. Now eventually all the water is drained out, so only the concrete sump in the pond has water and the remaining fish left in it. Now at this point it's pretty easy to net the remaining fish out. And they're basically scooped up, popped into the transport tank and taken back up to their fish hatchery sheds. So once back up the shed, the fish are weighed to work out an approximate number of fish harvested from the pond and they're also graded into different sizes. Now the reason being is the large fish with the jade perch, like some other species like barramundi, they will predate on their younger siblings. So it's a good idea to separate out the large fish from the smaller ones. Now. Bruce takes out the larger ones straight off the back of the truck and I was told by Richard that they like to keep around about 50 to 100 back every harvest so they can keep a healthy brood stock on the go at the farm. Then after they're weighed, the remaining fish are graded through a plastic tub with some slits in the bottom uh, which basically prevents the larger fish from falling through. The smaller fish stay in one tank and the larger ones are moved on to another tank and that way they won't be tempted to have a bit of a midnight snack on their siblings. And while in the tanks, they do a bit of a general health check to make sure the fish are all hunky-dory. And from there, they're just packed up as the orders come through, shipped out to commercial farms here in Australia or all around the world, or to folks like ourselves who like to grow them in the backyard aquaponics system. 
As I said before, Bruce was very generous and let me use a lot of videos from his own channel. Uh, it'd be great if you could show him some love, go over and visit his website, links in the description, maybe buy some fish off him and check out his YouTube channel as well. All those links will be down in the description and his little uh, face will pop up at the end if you want a direct link over to his channel. Uh, before I go, I would really like to thank the lads there as well as Bruce's amazing wife. Thank you very much for the hospitality on the day. Hopefully we'll be up again soon um, to have another chat, and maybe an ale or two. Uh, before I go, I'd quickly like to thank you all for coming along and thumbing up these videos, sharing them around with your family and friends, and uh, maybe hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'd also like to thank you marvellous folks who are helping to support the channel through the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard page. Thank you very much folks, really do appreciate it. I will pretty much all leave it there though. I do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics is booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, take it easy.